Hey YouTube. Hey, uh, it occurs to me that after about nine months of making these videos, uh, I have mentioned Bannerman's Camp a number of times. Uh, it's in the intro to every video I've made. It occurs to me that I that I haven't really explained what Bannerman's Camp is, and to some of the uninitiated, exactly what classic camping living history is. So let me take a moment to do that. Now first off, Bannerman's Camp, the name comes from two sources. Two sources. One is uh, the Francis Bannerman's and Sons wholesale uh, army surplus catalog that began in, shortly after the Civil War and sold the army surplus uh, from that point until uh, the late the, the early 1960s, almost 100 years. The other part, the camp part, comes from uh, Abercrombie's Camp, the company that David Abercrombie founded after leaving Abercrombie and Fitch. Now, uh, the name is constructed so as to reflect the type of gear and clothing that would be used during the classic camping period, which we define as being from around 1890, the late 1880s, until 1939, 1941. December 7th is pretty much the cutoff date. Okay? Now this is a period where the 19th century and the 20th century both come together and smash up against each other. And one of the cultural uh, shifts during this period was where people started going outdoors for recreational purposes, rather than as a consequence of their employment or financial circumstance. Uh, prior to this, if you were going to go camping, you were pretty much taking a trip from Pennsylvania to Oregon to move. That's what your camping was, was about. Now, that's not to say that there wasn't recreational camping before this, but it was pretty much the province of the affluent. Uh, by the time the second decade of the 20th century rolls around, camping starts to become much more accessible to common people. Okay? Now, what living history is, is a way to study and understand history by doing what some people call experiential archaeology. Use some big words. Experiential archaeology is where regular archaeology you dig and you look for artifacts. In experiential ar ar archaeology you're digging for an experience. You're trying to understand how, what, and why people did what they did by attempting to replicate their experience. Now, classic camping living history has been in existence for about 25 years. Uh, the first uh, group that, uh, that that began 
classic camping living history interpretation was a group called the Acorn Patrol. It was formed by Steve Watts and David Westcott. And they dedicated to the principle of interpreting early camping and the way that it changed from being uh, a circumstance of employment to being a circumstance of pleasure. And they focused primarily on uh, group camps and reflect a good deal of what motor camping is. And that allows, a, what, what I mean by that is, like today, just as it is today, when camping and outdoor living in this country began as recreation, it quickly split into two groups. Motor camping, which is what we call car camping today. It just going someplace in your car and camping when you get there. And then there is backpacking, it's what we call it today, but back in those days it was trekking, called, called trekking. Okay, now, heretofore, that's a big word meaning up until now, most Classic camping living history did focus on motor camping and this uh, more pleasurable style of camping. What Francis Buzzacott calls in his uh, encyclo Sportsman's Encyclopedia, smoothing it rather than roughing it. But during the early part of the 20th century, there was something else going on. In the turn of the century, a number of clubs were formed. Uh, the Sierra Club on the West Coast, the uh, Green Mountain Club, Appalachian Mountain Club on the East Coast, the Smoky Mountain Hiking Club. Uh, there were a number of these. In 1910, the longest recreational trail then in existence, the Long Trail, 270 miles, it was begun construction and it was completed in 1930 uh, by the uh, Green Mountain Club. The uh, John Muir Trail was established starting in 1914, was completed in 1927 by the Sierra Club, not to be outdone by their buddies on the East Coast. In 1921, the Appalachian Trail Conservancy was formed, which put together a number of these clubs on the East Coast to uh, build a planned, the longest, what still remains today, the longest hiking only trail uh, in the world, the Appalachian Trail, with over 20, 2,100 miles. The YMCA created a number of uh, hiking clubs uh, after the First World War for reasons that we will discuss in another video. Uh, and in the, uh, after the First World War, a huge amount of uh, cheap and durable army surplus started hitting the market. It had been on the marketplace for quite some time, but a good deal more of it suddenly appeared. And for this reason, people started doing more hiking. It still wasn't as prevalent as motor camping or family camping, car camping, if you would. Camping remained a uh, cheap family vacation that could be taken uh, for, for a week or two at a time. But for this reason, uh, Bannerman's Camp was formed in order to interpret this aspect of uh, early 20th century uh, camping and uh, outdoor sports. What the goal is, is to take three groups, three broadly defined groups, reenactors and living historians, bushcrafters and woodcrafters, and modern-day backpackers and hikers, and get as many interested individuals from those three groups together to share information in order to study 
and practice trekking, backpacking, other outdoor sports other than the motor camping and casual camping that is heretofore, there's that big word again, uh, being been practiced by living historians. Now, for you living historian guys out there, this is not the usual pitch you will hear from another living history guy. I am not trying to get you to join my unit or my club. Bannerman's camp has no rules, no structure, no nothing. It's kind of like camping. What I want you to do, I don't want you to come to my, my events. I'm not trying to get you to join my unit or come to my events. I want you to start your own. It's an easy thing to do if you are, like me, afflicted with what living historians call multiple period syndrome, where just doing World War II isn't good enough for you, and you do Civil War, and you do Indian Wars, and you do World War I, and the War of 1812, and any number of other different periods. What that means for you is that you've got a lot of the gear and maybe some of the clothing already in your closet. So this makes a fairly cheap impression uh, to do. For you bushcrafters out there, here's where you get a chance to learn about the history of what it is you're doing. And you can share your information about skills and practices with backpackers and living historians who might not necessarily have ever needed them before. Backpackers can offer the same kind of information only from a different aspect. And you can understand your backpacking hobby and your backpacking gear a little bit better if you have a base of knowledge about where it all came from. But more than anything, what Bannerman's Camp is all about is the heart and soul of living history and reenacting. And that is not the event. It's not the period. It's not the venue. It's what a friend of mine calls Campfire Fellowship. I had a friend of mine tell me uh, a while ago he's never been to a bad event because every event for him meant the time he spent around the campfire with his buddies. From a living history aspect, what Bannerman's Camp does is that's pretty much the centerpiece of the event. If you go to a Bannerman's Camp event or if you go to a Bannerman's Camp event that has been uh, scheduled and, and organized, loosely so, uh, by others, uh, you will find that there's, you don't have to wait for the docent to show up with the key. You don't have to look for parking. You're going out in the woods. You don't need 30 people to have a good event. A good camping trip can consist of two people or 200. That's what Bannerman's Camp is all about. So I invite you to join the Bannerman's Camp Facebook page. Learn a little bit more about it. Keep up with this YouTube channel. Please like the videos so that other people can find them. Please subscribe to this channel and hit that notification button so you know when the next videos come out. Visit Mr. Dyer's Musings. He's another classic camping video uh, maker as well as a guy uh, at 20th Century Adventures, Nathaniel Logston. So, there's the pitch on Bannerman's Camp and classic camping living history. Let me know in the comments what you think, and uh, join us at Bannerman's Camp Facebook page. See you down the trail.